Hey, thanks for making it to Veterans Info Tap. I'm glad you made it. Let's talk about the VA's rule for re-examination directly from the Code of Federal Regulations in which the VA is supposed to follow. Now, look, I get it. Do they screw it up? Sure. But there's probably more times that they follow it than screw it up. I, I But I get it. And it I would be frustrated if they screwed it up with me. And I'm frustrated when they screw it up with anybody. But there is law in place regarding re-examinations and protections against the VA re-examining you. So let's jump into it. Um, I did a video on the five-year rule and I I mentioned the 55-year-old rule and then somebody had a question on that. uh, So I figured it would be a good time to run through this again. So the VA's rules on re-examinations and the protections that are uh, afforded to you with regard to those re-examinations. Now, we all know that a re-examination could result in a reduction in your rating, which is what we do not want and which is why it is very stressful. So, let's jump into it here. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, share with a friend, all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. The two asks. Hit that thumbs up, let the video run as long as you can. Uh, it just, it really does tell YouTube the two things, right? Thumbs up and look, I'm watching this and there's information in here that is good. If you watch it for two seconds and drop off, uh, YouTube realizes that you're not watching it. So if you have the time, look, I get it, we're busy. If you have two seconds, you have two seconds. But if you have two minutes, you got two minutes. If you got seven minutes, you got seven, right? So anyway, let's jump into it. So in the Code of Federal Regulations, under re-examinations, under the first uh, portion here, which is A, alpha, and it's general, I'm going to just kind of skim through this for you real quick. Re-examinations include periods of hospital observation will be requested whenever VA determines there is a need to verify either the continued existence or the current severity of a disability. Now, I'm going to stop there because you have a little bit of power when you're filing your initial claim or your claim, your first claim for a condition. And that power is working with your provider to really annotate if your condition is static. If like, look, if I've had this thing for 15 years, 20 years, 40 years, whatever, migraines, GERD, whatever it is, and it's not getting any better and it hasn't gotten any better, make sure that gets written in your uh, medical records and it's in the medical records that you supply to uh, the VA as evidence. And I would go as far as, hey, look, doc, can you write me a little letter, kind of, even if you don't need a nexus letter, but if you do, that's cool too. Have them write a letter that includes the fact that your condition is deemed static. That will help the VA because that's what they're looking for here. Your condition is not static. Well, we need to see if you're getting any better with treatment and medications and so forth. Uh, so we're going to call you back in. Uh, you know, and, and that window of opportunity for the VA is five years or less. Well, less than the five-year mark. So let's move on. Generally, re-examinations will be required if it is likely that the disability has improved or evidence indicates there has been a material change in a disability. Even Stan. He's kind of far away, so don't know if you heard him. All right, material change in a disability or that a current rating may be incorrect. Individuals for whom re-examinations have been authorized and scheduled are required to report for such re-examinations. Paragraphs B and C of this section provide general guidelines for requesting re-examinations. And again, remember that this is the VA's kind of rule book but shall not be construed as limiting VA's authority to request re-examinations or periods of hospital observation at any time in order to ensure that a disability is accurately rated. Basically what they're saying is is that at any time they can uh, they they have the ability to to do that if they deem it necessary um, for whatever reason. Uh, moving on compensation cases which is what most of us are going to fall under uh, I'll skip the pension one for now Compensation is your disability compensation, your bad knee, your bad back, your percentages, um, and so forth. So, scheduling re-examinations. Assignment of a 
uh, pre-stabilization rating requires re-examination within the second six-month period following separation from service, following initial Department of Veterans Affairs examination, or any scheduled future or other examination re-examination if in order will be scheduled within not less than two years, no, nor more than five years. So that's that five-year period that we talk about. Uh, so the VA has that window of opportunity, typically more than two years and less than five year window. So if you walked in and you said, I just got diagnosed for GERD for the first time ever in my life, um, or I am uh, just got diagnosed and uh, for PTSD and I have no real track record of therapy, uh, those would be two kind of situations in which the VA may say, okay, cool, we're going to rate you based on your current severity but in three years four years your treatment may have reduced the severity and then we need to adjust the rating accordingly so uh, that's the window two years uh, not less than two years nor more than five years in your award letter it should stay it should state in there that you are subject to a future examination so within the judgment of the rating board unless another time period elsewhere is specified so typically it's that moving on this is the important part no periodic future examination will be requested in service-connected cases, no periodic exam re-examination will be scheduled. Then it has a uh, one here. When the disability is established as static, which is what I was talking about at the beginning. If you work with your doctor to, to be able to get the wording that your condition is static, not likely to get any better and more likely to get worse over time, um, you will be able to provide that evidence to the VA and hopefully get them to rule uh, in your in your decision that your condition is static. All right, so that's number one. That's one of the safety provisions written in here, right? So there will be no exam, no future examinations, and no periodic re-examinations if your disability is established as static. Now, a little side note, in order to get 100% permanent and total, you have to have enough of your conditions that add up to 100% that are all deemed static. They're not changing. Now, there's um, five other kind of safety provisions in here, protections, if you will, and I'm gonna go through those, and basically what these are still alluding to is a static nature okay so that's why static is the most important kind of word in this whole thing they don't say static on these but i'll i'll add it in uh and let you know where i do uh so the next one for no future examination and no periodic re-examination all right so the next one is when the findings and symptoms are shown by examination scheduled in paragraph b2 which is where we're at uh of this section or other examinations and hospital reports to have persisted without material improvement for a period of five years or more. So if you've been going to the doctor for five years or more for the same condition and nothing has changed, maybe your prescription actually went up making it a, a worse condition, right? Or at least it stayed the same. For five years or more, the VA goes, well, that's static. You're not getting any better. So it goes back to the static piece, right? You have proven over a five-year period that your condition is static. Also, I'll throw out there that there are certain conditions that are just static in nature. You have it, and that's it, right? It's, it's not going to uh, go away. So next one. Where the disability from disease is permanent in character and of such nature that there is no likelihood of improvement. Okay, so there you go. That's the one I just said. The next one, in cases of veterans over 55 years of age, except under unusual circumstances. So if you're 55 years and older, and, and let's say that um, maybe 
maybe there's a couple, a handful of things, right? So let's say that there was a, a, a cancer and the cancer gets treated and has uh, subsided. Well, they might call you back in for a re-examination on the cancer because now it's not active. Um, or again, we'll use the PTSD thing. Maybe you just got out uh, not too long ago. You finally got diagnosed. You, you haven't really had treatment ever until now. Uh, they might want to check in on you uh, later. Uh, moving on. Um, and, and even they might just chalk that up as well. So uh, when the rating is prescribed scheduled minimum rating, what that means is that you are rated at the rating schedule's lowest rating. There is no lower you can go. If the lowest rating for that condition is 10% and you're rated 10%, they're not going to do a re-examination because it's a waste of time. They've already deemed that your service connected for it. It doesn't matter if you get any better, uh, you know, if, it's, if your symptoms alleviate a little bit, they're not gonna reduce you because there's nothing to reduce you to. You're already at the lowest. Um, and this is important when it comes to your 100% as well. If you have extra conditions, right, um, there, there's, there is, there's a way to stack them up, right? So they're stacking up. This is just another. So like if you're, if you're at 94% and you needed tinnitus at 10% um, and you finally get diagnosed for it, well, 10% is the lowest you can be. So that automatically would throw you into the bucket. Now, the next one I like, especially for... 100%. So, where a combined disability evaluation would not be affected if the future examination should result in reduced evaluation for one or more conditions. It's a mouthful. I get it. What they're saying is if you have a certain rating, let's say that all your conditions are static except for one, just for an example and you're rated at 70% or 100%, whatever you're at, and, and all your conditions are static except for one. But that one condition, even if it was a 0%, would not change your overall rating because of the VA funny math. If, if that one condition that is not permanent doesn't change your overall rating, no matter if it's a 0%, then they won't do a re-examination because it doesn't change your overall rating kind of like the one above so a, a quick example would be me and I'll try to sp spit it out if I can remember it right so I ended up getting to a hundred percent not permanent in total and I had a and the reason why was because I had one condition that was future exam so I'm at 100%, but it's not permanent in total because I have one condition that took me there that I have a future exam. However, during that time period, I also had an appeal with the board for an increase. That finally came back and they said, we're going to increase you. So they increased that specific rating, which then took me to 100% with all static conditions and I no longer needed that condition with the future examination. You could throw it away. You could zero it out. Didn't need it anymore. Now I have all my conditions static at 100%. So now the VA makes me 100 Well, I had to request because they didn't just automatically do it. I had to tell the VA, hey, look, I have enough conditions here that are all static. I should be 100% permanent in total. VA looked at it and said, you know what, you're right. They made me permanent in total and then they eliminated any future exam for that one condition because it doesn't change my overall. So with that, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Have a great one. And remember, if we don't take care of each other, something went wrong.